Welcome back to another episode of Bibliophiles, a show from the Ann Arbor District Library that's all about books. Each episode, we answer one book-related question. This time, we're talking about great coming-of-age books. I'm here today with Lucy and Amanda, and my name's Christopher. Uh, Lucy, what did you pick for us this time? Um. Okay, well, I picked a book that is sort of a generational coming of age. It is Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. And this book starts with a coming of age party for a 16-year-old named Melody. And um, once you get uh, presented with this scene of her party, you kind of start to go back to see where Melody came from and how she is coming of age. So there are two urban black families, uh, one that's prosperous with two devoted parents named Sabe and Poboy. And then the other family is a single mother, Kathy Marie, and she has a son named Aubrey. And the other parents have a daughter named Iris and Iris and Aubrey are the parents of Melody. So um, that's sort of like the small tree, but while it starts out being this coming of age for Melody, I think it's really Iris's story and, and her personal and uh, psychological growth. She and Aubrey get, she gets mistakenly pregnant when she's 15 and they decide to have Melody and she wants to have Melody. Um, but she's always grown up thinking she was going to go to college. Her parents went to college. And so um Three years after she gives birth to Melody, Iris leaves to go to college. They um, they live in New York and she goes to Oberlin. So she's not that close. And Aubrey, the father, realizes he has no desire to go to college and he loves being a dad. And he gets a job in a mailroom and he stays and becomes this really hands-on single father, essentially. And um, the reason why I say it's Iris's coming of age story is that we see what happens when she leaves her daughter, how difficult that is for her, but also how she doesn't give up trying to achieve what she wanted to achieve. And she pursues her education, even though she can't go back. To, she was in a Catholic high school, so she can't go back there. So it's actually Aubrey's mother who ends up educating her so she can get her GED. She achieves that. She gets into college and what I liked about it is that Jacqueline Woodson never vilifies Iris for being the one who leaves. And I feel like there are so many narratives where you have a, a, a teen pregnant mom whose life is sort of ruined by this. And here you have these two loving parents, this teen dad that stays behind. But then I also feel like the narrative of a mother leaving her child is just like the, it, it's the worst thing, you know? And I, um, uh, so I think that that's an important part of this coming of age story that Iris gets to still have this growth. And you also get to go back and forth. You go back to both of Iris's and Aubrey's parents and see how they got where they are. So you get some of their coming of age. And then finally you do get melodies. That's the one who's having the party all throughout this. So it's very much a generational coming of age story. Um, the characters are not perfect, which I also liked about it. Like they're not, they make mistakes. They're flawed um, because it spans such a large uh, time frame with the generations. This book has things like the Tulsa massacre in it, but it also has September 11th in it that are relevant to these characters. So this book is 196 pages. There is so much in it. Um, and it's a, it's a quick read. It's a great read though. Jacqueline Woodson, if you haven't read her, I highly recommend any of her books. She's a beautiful writer. So that is um, Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. And it's my take on a coming of age story. Uh, Amanda, what did you pick? Well, Lucy, that book sounds great. Um, I, I do, I like, I like coming of age novels and movies. Um, I feel like a lot of books that I read tend to be um, some sort of coming of age tale. Uh, so I didn't know what to pick for this as usual. Um, I feel like we always have that problem each week we start with, I didn't know what to pick. Um, but I actually had another new, new to me book I was going to read. And then I was um, 
visiting with a friend and I was mentioning, you know, oh, I got to find a coming of age book and I'm going to read this one. And the friend I was talking to um, spent time in New York and the book I was going to read is set in New York. And then she recommended this book, Mary Jane, Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. It's a new book. It's a new adult fiction book um, published in 2021. I loved this book. It's a fast read. Um, it is set in Baltimore in the seventies, maybe it's 1974 and the main character it's written in first person. Mary Jane is 14 and she lives with her mom and dad and Mary Jane's family is very neat and very organized. Um, they go to church every Sunday. Her mom plans out meals for a month. Everything is very structured and rigid. Um, her parents worship President Ford. There's a giant photo of him behind the, the kitchen table. The father sits at the table during dinner and just reads. He barely says anything to any of them. Um, you don't call grownups by their first names. We are proper. We wear our church shoes only to church. Um, so this is Mary Jane's life. She's 14, this is all she knows. And then this summer, she becomes a nanny for a five-year-old girl who lives in their neighborhood at the Cone family. And they do things very differently at the Cone family. They walk around barefoot. They play music loud and dance. They walk around in bikinis. They holler up the stairs to each other. They don't really cook a lot of meals at home. They get takeout, they get prepared food. All of this is so new and foreign to Mary Jane. It's also very invigorating. So she has this wonderful summer with the Cone family. Um, Shortly after she begins this job working with this adorable little five-year-old girl named Izzy, who you just want to like squeeze and grab and just play with. Um, so the doctor or the, the dad in the family is a doctor and he has a patient coming to stay with them so he can treat him. And the patient is a very famous musician and his wife is a very famous actress. So here's Mary Jane in this household caring for this, this child. And then you have this famous musician and his wife come to stay and they just end up having this wonderful summer, all kinds of shenanigans. There are some issues that happen, um, but it's just so pleasant and delightful. And hearing Mary Jane narrate all of these, these things that are so new and exciting to her and her take on them, um, it's just wonderful. It was a really, it's a fun read. It's a fast read. I normally wouldn't have probably grabbed this book, but a friend's like, hey, I just read this and and I did and it, it was super fast. Um, it's a great like summer read or a beach read or, um, and so 14 year old Mary Jane, and this is her coming of age summer. And she has to deal with or think about like how different her family behaves and what she's expected to do at home versus how she's expected to and allowed to behave um, at the Cone House as she's with this family. So it's a great fun, fun summer book. Um, Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. Christopher. <laughs> Well, I got another book recommendation from my daughter, and it was a lot of fun. I never do this, but I read this book in one day. And the book is uh, Kelly Quinlan's Late to the Party. It was a lot of fun. And uh, the book is essentially about three friends who feel like they've been uh, they've, uh, they haven't experienced a lot of classic high school experiences. So they haven't been to parties. They haven't been drinking. They haven't done any dating or kissed anyone at all. And they're going into their senior year. So one of the friends, Cody, decides that she really wants to change things for herself. And she gets another set of friends that are great. And she feels a lot of guilt about having this set of friends that are just hers. And she gets to kind of reinvent herself. So it's about her first romance and about all these fun experiences she has. And it was great reading this book because I felt like I was back in high school doing all these carefree, fun things, just enjoying life. Um, I love the resolution. It seemed very cinematic at the end, and, but the very end of the book is perfect because it kind of ends, I won't say right in the middle of things, but it ends at the end of the summer with a lot of things unresolved and that's okay because it was just like real life. We don't know what's going to happen with all these relationships. And that was great. But everyone will figure it out one way or the other. So I loved it. Kelly Quinlan, late to the party. <laughs> um, does anyone have any last comments on uh, coming of age stories? 
<laughs> no, I will say though that the um, luxury of reading a book in one day is so enjoyable. And I find that when I've done that, those books stick with me like uh, more maybe than books that it took a long time to read, I think, because it's so immersive and you're just in that world. Um, so I yeah. envy you for doing that, for doing it, but like we all could, you know, we all could do it. We just have to. Yeah, it's make that the priority. Once in my life. <laughs> oh, snap. Um, well, for Mary Jane, this book, I probably read it in two sittings. And when it was done, yeah. I, I missed the family. I missed Mary Jane. I missed the little girl. I missed the rock star and his wife, like playing guitar and singing and making everything a fun game. Like I missed, I missed them because yeah. <laughs> it was that immersive experience. Like you said, Lucy. Mm-hmm. Right. That's great. Well, uh, as always, if you have a recommendation or would like to tell us what you're reading and what a great coming of age story is, we would love to know. You can leave us a comment on the AADL site. And until next time, take care.